The next decision rule we're going to talk about is called the payback rule. Unlike the net present value rule, the payback rule is pretty straightforward. In fact, it may be the easiest rule because it has the same meaning in the economic and financial sense as it does in the colloquial sense. A project is paid back once its positive cash flows equal its negative cost. So we say the project has been paid back. Whatever we've spent on the cost, we have recovered from positive cash flows. And so the payback period is simply how long it takes for the positive cash flows to equal the initial cost. And we accept it based on a payback rule that we choose. And this is going to be different for every firm. It's going to be different for every project. Again, as, I just, as we did talk about in the lecture, the payback rule and the fact that it's arbitrarily chosen is one of the fallbacks, one of the one of the downfalls of using the payback rule to decide whether a project is good or not. But it does have its uses, specifically, uh, as we talked about, it has, uh, it has uses in, in projects that are of lower value or for smaller firms or where you don't want to use all the, the time and effort to do the net present value. So here's our project, the same one we worked before, has an initial cost of 165000 three years of positive cash flows. We want to know what's the payback period and then based on our rule and here the rule is we, we require projects to pay back in two years do we accept the project so i start off and I, I like to write it down because i like to see it i think this makes it easier certainly once you get more comfortable doing these problems you, you won't you won't have to do it this way start off by writing a a, a, a vertical timeline of sorts where the initial cash flow the initial cost is written up top and then add each year's positive cash flows until you get to zero. So we add the first year's cash flow, which is 63,120. This is our year one cash flow. If we add this to the initial cost, we have paid back 63,120, but we still need to cover $101,880. So we haven't paid back on the project yet. So we had the second year's cash flow, and the second year's cash flow was 70800 And we can see that we won't pay back here either. If I add those two values, I get negative 31080 So I haven't paid back. And we can see right away that because of our arbitrary two-year rule, the project is not going to pay back, so to speak, in two years because the positive cash flows won't have equaled the negative cost. So based on the, the, the payback period rule, we would reject. But we have two parts to the problem. We still want to know what the actual payback period is. How long does it take? Even though we know we're going to reject in part two. So we add the final cash flow, and the final cash flow is 91,080. And here we can see that we will certainly pay back in year three, 91,000 being greater than negative 31,000. So at some point during year three, we're going to pay back this project because we will have earned that $91,000 equally over the entire year. So we pay back at some point during year three. And what we want to know is how long, at which, how long of, of the third year did it take? So we say that it takes two full years year one and year two plus some part of year three to pay back and because we assume that the this cash flow this third year's cash flow is 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 earned by the project evenly throughout the year the way we figure out how long of the third year it takes is we divide the amount that we have to pay back, 31,080, by the amount that we earn in that third year, 91,080. Result of this division is 0.3412. And what that says is about 34% of the third year goes by, which in this case is about four months. Right? So it takes two full years and 
four months, or 2.34 years, to pay back the project. And part two says we reject because the payback rule says take any project that pays back and under our limit. And we reject because 2.34 is greater than 2. Now, this example is specifically chosen and meaning I chose two years to be so that particularly so that we would reject a project that we already knew from the MPV problem was a good one. This, we, this project we know has a positive MPV and because the MPV is the golden rule, we know that that means that this is a good project. The payback rule and its arbitrary cutoff date means that we often are going to reject good projects in favor of bad ones. And this is a known problem and it's something that we just have to be aware of. Now one of the things that we often think about here is, well, 2.34 is actually pretty close to 2. And why wouldn't we just, you know, fudge the fudge the, the number here a little bit? Either extend our payback rule and say, oh, well, why, since we don't know have any good reason for choosing two years altogether, why don't we just choose two and a half years or three years? And the answer is that this is a slippery slope. What if the next project we try to analyze takes 3.5 years? And so then we say, oh, well, 3.5 is pretty close to 3. Why don't we push the payback rule about out to 4? And then we're stuck with it trying to decide where do we stop this slippery slope. And if we're going to have an arbitrary rule, we need to just stick with it. So we, we, we use the payback period rule for certain things, for certain kinds of projects. It has a lot of use. It's probably the second most used project rule but it does have this known problem and it, and it is something that we have to be aware of when we use it to analyze projects in the future.